Hi everyone. Today in this video, I am going to talk about one of the medication, Ozinoxacin. What is this drug, Ozinoxacin? This is one of the topical quinolone antibiotic, and this drug acts as antibacterial agent. Particularly, it can be used in the treatment of impetigo, where skin blistering, skin eruptions, and redding of the skin can be observed at the different parts of the body including the face, arms, because of bacterial infections. Two important bacteria are mainly responsible for induction of impetigo in the people, particularly Staphylococcus aureus infections and Streptococcus pyogenes infections. So impetigo is a skin disorder because of any bacterial infection, which can be treated by ozinoxacin. So this drug is one of the quinoline antibacterial agent and it is available as a cream. Since impetigo can be observed in both children as well as in the adults, this drug can be used both in the adults as well as in the children and even it can be used for the pediatric purpose. So even in the newborns with age greater than 2 months, this ozinoxacin can be used to treat the impetigo. Just we have discussed that this drug is one of the quinolone antibiotic. Quinolone medications are widely used as antibacterial agents. So among these, ozinoxin is one of the newer agent. Here we can observe the suffix noxacin, which can be observed in first generation quinoline antibiotics. For instance, synoxacin and anoxacin are the first two generation antibacterial agents which are belonging to the quinoline category. We can observe that they are having the same suffix noxacin. Later development of fluoroquinones results in the various types of drugs like norfloxin, ciprofloxin, levofloxin, all these drugs are having the suffix floxacin where it indicates they are fluoroquinolones. So ozinoxacin is a quinolone but it is not a fluoroquinolone since it is not having the fluorine in its structure. But still all these drugs act in a similar way, they can inhibit the DNA replication, thereby they can inhibit the growth of bacteria. And ozinoxin can be topically used to treat the bacterial infections. That's why it is indicated in the treatment of impetigo. So today in this video, we are going to discuss how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see how this drug acts. The main action of ozinoxacin is just like the fluoroquinolone antibiotics. This drug can block the two types of enzymes. The first one is topoisomerase 2. This is one of the enzymes which can relieve the topological strain because of coiled structure within the DNA. This topoisomerase 2 is also called as DNA gyrase A. So this enzyme is blocked by ozinoxacin, thereby it can inhibit the DNA replication. Similarly, it can also block another enzyme topoisomerase 4, which is responsible for cleaving of four strands in the replicating DNA. This enzyme again relieves the topological strain, therefore it is essential for DNA replication and release of new daughter DNA. But ozinoxacin can block this enzyme activity, thereby it can inhibit the DNA replication. So this is the coiled form of the DNA which is called the positive supercoil which is not suitable for DNA replication. This positive supercoil is having the topological strain which should be relieved by recoiling of this DNA. This action can be accomplished by one of the enzyme DNA gyrase A or it is also called as topoisomerase 2. Now this DNA gyrase can act on the positive supercoil and it can produce a breakage of DNA strands that results in the formation of a structure like this and here you can observe a small nick is observed between the coil structure of the DNA. Now because of this nick or opening of the DNA coil now it can undergo rotation and it can relieve any topological strain such that after the rotation again it can be sealed to form the new DNA which is having the negative supercoil. Now this negative supercoil form of the DNA is not having any topological strain so it is stable and it can undergo the replication. In this way one of the key step in the DNA replication is the stabilization of the supercoil by converting the positive supercoil into the negative supercoil. Here three steps are involved. The first one is the nick formation by DNA gyrase enzyme, then rotation of supercoil and again sealing of the DNA to produce negative supercoil. But 
among these three steps the first step is more important the dna strand breakage by dna gyrase enzyme now this step is blocked by ozinoxacin ozinoxacin can block the dna gyrase enzyme such that it cannot form any nick in the dna thereby it can inhibit the formation of negative supercoil of the dna so this inhibits the dna replication and growth of the bacteria in this way ozinoxacin can reduce the bacterial infections during the dna replication the catenated dna can be formed where the two coils of dna are catenated and these can be separated by again the topoisomerase 4 enzyme this enzyme can produce a breaking of four strands within the dna so that it can release the catenated dna this enzyme can act at this site so that again it forms a nick within the dna so because of this nick formation now these coils can be released and they are called decatenated dna now ozinoxacin can inhibit the decatenation of dna it can bind to the its target topoisomerase 4 where it inhibits its activity now topoisomerase cannot break this dna so that the catenated dna cannot be converted into decatenated dna so this again inhibits the dna replication and release of daughter dna thereby the bacterial growth is inhibited now let us see the precautions all we have discussed that ozinoxin is a topical quinoline antibacterial agent so this drug can be applied topically on the skin but any medication when applied topically it may show some systemic absorption but in the case of ozinoxacin it shows somewhat less systemic absorption so no significant systemic absorption is observed with ozinoxacin which is one of the advantages of this drug even though it does not show any significant systemic absorption the skin should not undergo prolonged exposure with this drug because it may develop fear of the bacterial as well as fungal infections so on prolonged use of ozinoxacin care should be taken to check any development of bacterial and fungal infections if any infection is developed in the people immediately the use of ozinoxacin cream should be avoided as these opportunistic infections may further complicate the therapy that's why this medication should be applied as a thin film to a particular area that is less than 100 square centimeters in order to eliminate any development of bacterial and fungal infections similarly this drug is not intended for oral purpose and it is also not intended for ophthalmic purpose so any contact with eye or oral consumption of this drug should be avoided and it is also not indicated for intravaginal purpose now let us see the side effects of this drug the main side effects are the local reactions use of ozinoxacin can produce one of the condition rosacea this is a condition where we can observe reddening of the facial skin nose due to local inflammatory reactions and it can also produce another condition seborrheic dermatitis these are the two local reactions that can be produced by use of ozinoxacin but on prolonged exposure it can produce some bacterial and fungal infections now let us the chemical nature of this drug so this is the structure of ozinoxacin we can clearly observe quinoline moiety within the structure let us give the numbering this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 now it is having a carboxylic acid at the third portion and ring system is quinoline so we can write this as quinoline 3 carboxylic acid now at the first portion it is having the cyclopropyl group so one cyclopropyl fourth portion ketone group is present so 4 oxo seventh portion is having another heterocyclic ring system let us give the numbering this is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so this is the pyridine ring system which is attached by third portion so we can write this as 7 dash pyridine 3 ail now to this pyridine at the fifth portion methyl group is present so 5 methyl and sixth portion methyl amino group is present so 6 methyl amino so this is the entire structure attached at the seventh position and finally at the eighth position of quinoline methyl group is present so 8 methyl that is a complete name of ozinoxacin so ozinoxacin is a quinoline derivative with the fourth position ketone so it's also called as quinolone antibacterial agent how it is given ozinoxin is available as a cream at one percent strength and each one gram of the cream contains 10 milligrams of the ozinoxin this cream should be applied as a thin film on the skin twice daily but the low amount of the drug should be applied 
while applying the ozonoxacin care should be taken such that it is applied to the area less than 100 square centimeters or it is less than 2% of the total body surface area such that the total amount can be reduced and any development of bacterial and fungal infections can be prevented. So by reducing the area of application and by reducing the amount of the drug applied, this drug can be safely used to treat the impetigo without any adverse reactions. So that's all about this drug, ozinoxacin, which is a quinoline antibacterial agent, which is topically used to treat the impetigo. So that's all about this drug, ozinoxacin. That's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.